Okay, I will go over one of my old tests live. Uh, this is from fall 2014 test 5 solution. Number one, let solid E be given like this. Hmm. And the factor field F is that compute the double integral over the surface of that solid. If we take a look at that solid, that solid actually looks like a cylindrical circular cylinder. Uh, parallel to the y-axis, right? From y equals to 1 to y equals to 2. So it should look like this. OK, that's what it looks like. Uh, the big hint is that uh, we need to integrate over the boundary of that solid, right? OK, so we will apply divergence theorem, something we just learned, okay, double integral over the boundary of E of F dot D oriented S that is equals to by divergence theorem is a triple integral over solid E of divergence of factor field F D V. Now then what is divergence of that factor field F? x component to the derivative respect to x that's zero plus the y component do the derivative respect to y that will be six x squared plus the c component do the derivative respect to c that will be six c squared okay so now our triple integral becomes triple integral over solid E of 6 of x squared plus c squared dv. And I will integrate it this way. This is integral from 0 to 2 pi, integral from 0 to uh, square root of 2, huh? square root of 2, right? This is a cylinder with radius square root of 2. Okay, and the y will be from 1 to 2 of 6r squared r dy dr d theta. Okay, but when we integrate with respect to y, that's basically 2 minus 1, which is 1, so it becomes integral from 0 to 2 pi integral from 0 to square root of 2, 6r cubed dr d theta, which is 2 pi 6 over 4r to the 4 from 0 to radical 2. Hmm, that is 4, huh? So 2 pi times 6 over 4 times 4, that's 12 pi. That's for number 1. Number two, let's see be a counterclockwise oriented triangle with vertices, hmm, let me try to sketch that, with vertices 0, 0, 2, 0, 2, 2, this guy here. So that's the triangle. Okay, and uh, oriented counterclockwise. Okay, so it goes this way with that factor field. Compute integral over closed curve of curve C F dot dr. Uh, but we can use Green's theorem for this. This is double integral over the triangle, right? Let's call that D of q sub x minus p sub y dA. Okay, so what is my q sub x? q sub x is uh, 2y minus 2x 
minus p sub y p sub y is negative 2x minus 2y da when I put things together that will be hmm, double integral over d of 4y da huh? the integral will be from 0 to 2 and then integral from 0 to x 4y dy dx which is very easy to do right that is integral from 0 to 2 of 2y squared from 0 to x dx that is 2 thirds times 2 cubed that's 8 so that is 16 over 3 okay that's for this number 2 let's go on with number 3 let f, factor field f be this and the portion of paraboloid surface that lies above xy plane intersect xy plane at curve c hmm Okay, so we have that surface S. Intersect with the XY plane. At curve C. Now. The question is find compute integral over closed curve C of f dot dr. Hmm. But uh, this C here is if I use Stokes theorem. That will be double integral over curl of f dot d oriented s is it right but at the same time i don't think that's what i want to do um, yeah i don't think that's what i want to do uh, the reason is this C happens to also be the boundary of this guy here. Okay, so instead of using S, let's use D, double integral over domain D that, uh, of curl of F dot DS. Okay, uh, so I basically do double Stokes theorem. Now, on that D, the normal factor is 0, 0, 001. <laughs> That's nice, huh? Okay, so when we do our curl of F, since I need to do the dot product against 0, 0, 001, notice that I just need to care about the third component. Do, do X, do, do Y. Do, do C uh, of x c squared x squared y x squared c. I don't care about the first component, the second component. I care about the third component, which will be uh, this guy minus this guy. So there will be two x y minus zero. Okay, so double integral over d of that curl of f dot 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 2xy dot 0, 0, 1 da that is equals to integral from 0 to 2 pi integral from 0 to oh hold on uh, when z equals to 0 when c equals to 0 I get 16 minus 4 r square. So the radius is 2. Okay. 
to x y r d r d theta hmm somehow i think this will be zero y zero to two pi this is two cosine theta sine theta d theta integral from zero to two of r cube dr right let's see the domain is a rectangle quote unquote and the integrand is severable right but on uh, what happened here this is integral from zero to two pi of sine two theta d theta and this will be uh, 16 over 4, right? But this guy is here. Okay, this guy is here. You can try to integrate that, but yeah, it will be zero. Okay, so uh, of course, can I do it in the hard way, Thomas? Uh, like the, the one here. Can I use this method here? Can I use this method here? You can, you can try. Let's see. Suppose I do it. I will erase this later on. Okay, but uh, suppose I do it that way. So surface S is given by four uh, x squared plus four y squared plus c equals to sixteen. So uh, if I call this G, then the gradient of G, which is normal to surface S, will be eight x, eight y, one. Okay, while the curl of F. will be i j k do do x do do y do do c of x c squared x squared y x squared z the first component will be zero the second component will be um, negative of 2xc minus 2xc and the third component will be 2xy minus 0. Uh, so the curl of f, uh, now I see that even if I do it, I will get 0, 0, 2xy. Right, then the dot double integral over surface s of the curl of f dot uh, 8x 8y 1 da notice that this is already uh, because I use da here then it will be d already you project it down to xy plane and we get exactly the same integral right that's double integral over d of 2xy da so we get the same result <clears throat> Okay, it's just like we work a little bit harder because we need to compute uh, the curl of f in complete and we need to find the factor normal to the surface s, which is harder compared to uh, the surface normal to d. Now, the, the good thing about uh, surface d here, it's it's actually on the xy plane, so the normal factor is just zero, zero, 001, no computation. Right? I mean, unless you don't know what to do, uh, then nothing can help you. Uh, but, but if you happen to know oh, that's surface xy plane, right? then the factor normal to that must be 0, 0, 001. Okay? Yeah. But uh, the right hand side, the way we do the right hand side, uh, still okay. So, which way do you want to do? Uh, depends on quote unquote sneaky you are. <clears throat> Let me go on with question number four. We have that factor field XYZ, part of the paraboloid upward oriented surface, or the same surface that lies about F, above XY plane. Compute that double integral of surface S F dot DS. Hmm. This is not, not the curl, the double integral of S curl of f dot ds. No. If this is the one, then you can use Stokes theorem. And this is integral of a closed curve of c. 
of f dot dr, right? But it's not. It's not. <clears throat> okay, let's do it. Let's do it regular way first. Okay, so the normal factor of that surface will be eight x eight y one. Okay, and the double integral of surface S of that f x y z dot eight x eight y one uh, ds that is equal to let me just write it this way. This is 8x squared plus 8y squared plus z uh, ds over something, right? And the c is 16 minus that. So it will be double integral. Uh, let me make it d right now. But this is 8x squared plus 8y squared plus 16 minus 4x squared minus 4y squared dA. Okay, which will give us double integral over d of 16 plus 4r squared. Uh, yeah, 16, uh, let me use x squared plus y squared for now. x squared plus 4y squared da okay so this is equals to 16 times the area of d plus four times double integral from 0 to 2 pi and 0 to 2 of r squared r d r d theta 16 times 4 pi the the radius is what the radius is Two, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, plus four times uh, two pi times r to the fourth over four. That's uh, sixteen over four. So that's sixty-four pi plus thirty-two pi, which is ninety-six pi. Okay. Now notice that's what I do if I just apply that as is. I do the computation according to what they want. Now, another way is you enclose that surface. Okay, you see that you have that surface. Uh, it's the same, the same surface with this here. Okay, but we close it first with D. Okay, we close it with D. So, double integral over S of F dot DS plus double integral over the bottom f dot ds equals to triple integral over uh, solid e of divergence of f dv where the b is facing down okay the b is facing down okay the so divergence of f is Let's see what is the divergence of f. One, two, three. Oh, it's like a one plus one plus one, which is three. Okay, so triple integral over e of three dv equals to three times integral from zero to two pi, integral from zero to two, integral from zero to sixteen minus four r squared. That's Z, right? Of uh, R D C D R D theta, which is three times two pi integral from zero to two R times sixteen minus four R squared uh, D R. That's six pi 
times <coughs> 6 pi times uh, 8 r squared minus what's that uh, r to the fourth from 0 to 2 uh, for 32 minus 16 that's 16 that's 96 pi okay now but that's for this guy how about double integral over b of f dot ds that's the factor normal to this 0 0 negative 1 so that will be double integral over b uh, negative z but the c equals to 0 right b a that's equals to 0 okay so uh, where should i write it i don't have any room anymore uh, maybe I slip that here. So, double integral over S of F dot ds is that 96 pi minus 0, which is 96 pi. The same answer we have above. Okay? So, you can do it a regular way, the way the question asks you to do. Or if you are sneaky enough, you say, hey, you know what? Let me enclose that surface S so that I get a complete closure of a solid. Okay, so that I can use divergence theorem. Okay. Number five, find the divergence of F. I think this is just computation. This is... Uh, 2 cosine y plus 2 e to the c minus x squared cosine y plus y squared e to the c minus 12 x c. You so ugly. Am I doing it right? I think so. Huh? Yeah, so that's for divergence of F. It's more about do you know how to do the derivative there? Okay, now the curl of F is the one painful, right? So I, J, K, do, do, X, do, do, Y, do, do z of 2x cosine y minus 2c cubed and then 2y e to the z minus x squared sine y and the last part is y squared e to the c minus 6x c squared Whew. okay let's see what is the first term that will be 2y e to the c minus the three with respect to c that will be 2y e to the c oh that is zero minus for the second component respect to x that will be negative 6c squared minus respect to c that will be plus 6c squared also hmm something seems to be very nice the third component that will be negative 2x sine y minus the with respect to y that will be plus 2x sine y oh everything is zero oh okay so this factor field is actually conservative so so factor field f is conservative i didn't expect that unfortunately we don't need anything we don't need this information anyway this this will be useful if we have line integrals right okay uh, but uh, seems like that's not the case here hmm okay let's see number 16 we need to evaluate the surface integral I don't remember how to do this honestly oh okay so I need to compute the ds first 
Now the ds is defined to be the magnitude of ru cross rv. Okay, so what is ru? That's 4 cosine v. 4 sine v. Eh. Do I do the roof leaf? What am I doing? Negative 4 sine v. Negative 4 sine. No, no, no. I read respect to you. What am I doing? So I was right earlier. 4 sine v and then 3. R sub v will be negative 4 u sine v. 4 u cosine v and then zero now so the cross product will be negative 12 u cosine v minus 12 u sine v and then 16 u cosine squared v plus sine squared v which if we simplify that will give negative 12 u cosine v negative 12 u sine v 16 u hmm. so what happened to the magnitude r u cross r v this will give me 12 u. Well, we have common factor 12, right? I'm sorry, common factor. Actually, we have common factor 4 u. Common factor 4 u square root of negative 3 squared plus 4 squared. That will be 5. So that will be 20 u. So double integral over s of x plus y ds will be double integral the u will be from 0 to 4 the phi will be from 0 to pi of x plus y that is 4u cosine v plus sine v 20u d v d u it is very separable. Okay, and the domain is a rectangle, so that will be integral from 0 to 4 a du squared du integral from 0 to pi of cosine v plus sine v d v. I know this one will be 0. Okay, so this is 80 over 3 times 4 cubed times 2. Hmm. So what is 4 cubed? 64. 64, 128. So 80 times 128 over 3. Okay. Uh, do I want to compute it? Okay, I do it. Four, six, sixteen, twenty-one, six. Why I feel no one thousand twenty-four times ten. Okay, that's for number six. Let's see number seven. Oh, we did this kind of things earlier. Do I have to do it again? Hmm. Okay, what is R U? R U sub U will be hmm. The three forty four respect to U will be negative sine U cosine V negative sine u sine v cosine r sub v will be 
2 plus cosine mu negative sine v 2 plus cosine mu cosine v and 0 so what happened if I do the cross product man this one is painful oh at least this one I can factor something out so I can factor 2 plus cosine mu negative sine phi cosine phi comma zero okay i hope that helps okay, so the cross product will be i j k i give some extra space negative sine u cosine phi negative sine u sine phi cosine u and then negative sine v cosine v 0 and then later on I multiply by 2 plus cosine u okay <clears throat> so this is equal to uh, 2 plus cosine u and then times factor negative cosine u cosine v minus cosine u sine v and then the last component is negative sine u cosine squared v minus sine squared phi sine u okay so this is 2 plus cosine u negative cosine u cosine phi negative cosine u sine phi negative sine u that's the cross product. So notice that I fact I factor out two plus cosine u to help me simplify the computation. Okay, so how about the cross uh, the magnitude then? The magnitude of this will be hold on. Uh, let me copy this guy here so that I don't need to move the screen later on and put it here. Wait, something's moving. It moves a lot. Oh, well, I will just copy that then. So this will be equals to 2 plus cosine u times square root of. Okay. You see, this guy here, if we put them, things, uh, put them together, that would give us uh, cosine squared u. Huh? Because it, it will be cosine squared u, cosine squared phi, plus cosine squared u, sine squared phi, plus sine squared u. Right? Okay, good. Uh, but this becomes just 1. So this is 2 plus cosine u. Okay, now what is the surface area? Well, the surface area is surface area, area of S is double integral of S dS, right? Which is integral from 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 2 pi, I see it from here, 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 2 pi of 2 plus cosine u, D U D V. Okay, 
and then it's independent of phi so that's just 2 phi times the integral of u that will be 2u plus sine u integral from 0 to 2 pi oh by the way what am i doing this will go to 0 i don't need to think about that uh, you, you, you will see it will go to 0 so this will be 2 pi times 2 times 2 pi, that's 8 pi squared. Okay. Uh, how many more pages? Oh, this is the last page. Yay. Okay. Uh, part of the cone, let part of the cone above xy plane and the density is proportional to the distance from the z axis. So the density is equal to k times z that's how far it is from oh i'm sorry how far it is from the z axis no not kz then the distance from the z axis will be square root of x squared plus y squared oh yeah they have it here duh what am i doing okay now find the mass of s part of that cone so the, the it is a surface huh okay so the mass will be mass of that surface s will be double integral over s times the density ds which is double integral over d oh, what is the d first of all the d will be when c equals to zero So that's uh, r equals to 2. So the d is the disk width radius 2 on the ground. Uh, so this is k square root of x squared plus y squared. Okay. How about the ds? The ds, so c equals to k minus 2 square root of x squared plus y squared so c sub x will be negative x over square root of x squared plus y squared and am I right? oh two we have two up there and c sub y will be negative 2y over square root of x squared plus y squared. Okay, so c sub x squared plus c sub y squared plus 1 will be 4x squared plus 4y squared over x squared plus y squared plus 1. Uh, that's equals to 5. Oh, nice. Okay, so the ds will be square root of 5 dA. Okay, so this is square root of 5 times k integral from 0 to 2 pi, integral from 0 to 2 of r times r dr d theta. Now, the r, the first r is for this. This is the first r. And this is the DA. I make it into polar, right? Okay, so square root of 5k times 2 pi times uh, 8 over 3. Hmm, what is that? Uh, 16 square root of 5k pi over 3. How about the center of mass? Hmm. How about the center of mass? Uh, since the solid, since S is radial, and the density also radial, means uh, radial means this. Radial means this. Uh, you can turn the solid, rotate the solid around, along, uh, around Z axis and you get exactly the same shape, exactly the same density. 
okay now because of that then you will get the x bar equals to y bar equals to zero our issue is with the z okay so this uh, moment with respect to x y plane will be <clears throat> double integral of s density z ds okay which is double integral over d the density is k r right and then the z is 4 minus 2r and then square root of 5 da let's see how we do the substitution this is the kr this is the z this is the ds okay so i can factor the 4k you see what i did up there yeah, I can, oh, no, I mean, I can factor the square root of 5k, okay, integral from 0 to 2 pi, integral from 0 to 2, what else, uh, so 4r minus 2r squared, r d r d theta. Okay, uh, independent of theta, so that will be 2 pi square root of 5k, and then when I integrate inside, that will be 4 over 3 r cubed minus 1 half r to the fourth from 0 to 2. That will be 8, that's 32 over 3 minus 16, that will be 8, 24, 8 over 3, so 8 over 3, 16 pi radical 5k over 3, therefore c bar will be, hey, it's exactly the same, huh, the c bar equals to the moment with respect to x, y, plane over the mass that's equals to 1. So, the center of mass, x bar, y bar, c bar, equals to 0, 0, 1. Okay, that's for this test 5. Uh, by the way, when I gave this test, the time they have for that test is 1 hour 15 minutes, as usual. In there, uh, during that time, I remember I give them extra 10 minutes. So you can say that uh, you should be able to do this test in uh, 90 minutes instead. Okay, supposed to be 75 minutes, but uh, with that extra five, uh, 15 minutes I give them. Uh, uh, when you try to do this on your own, try to do this in less than 90 minutes. Okay. Now, during that semester, the reason I know I, I, I did that, uh, because when I gave this test, I, the reason I give five tests, because it's an everyday class, and each day is one hour to 15 minutes, each day. So when I gave them this test, uh, they only get 75 minutes, but I allowed them to start uh, 15 minutes earlier. So again, when you do this problem, this, this problem set here, try to do it in 90 minutes. Okay, which I believe I did in approximately one hour, as I remember. Okay, that's for today.